something that we pass down and teach. Now, I'm not saying that is intentional, you know, it's the same way when you're raising a toddler and they come home one day cursing and you're like, yeah. where the hell did you learn that? And then yeah. it's like, Oh, from you, you know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. Like the, 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 I learned it from you, dad theory of, of sociology, I think is a, is a very good one because that's kind of, I mean, we just got it. We were, I mean, human beings are, are great copy machines. I mean, that's what we we go around doing that like all the time, especially when we're young. But I mean, that's that's our go to like like when we have to do something that we've never done before. The first thing we do is like, how did somebody else do it? I mean, that's that's just like how we figure the, the, the world out. And if we have a bad or non functional or or a, abusive template, which we're adopting for ourselves, then, mm-hmm. then everything that we do is going to carry those same characteristics with it. Absolutely. And it's hard to know what to do sometimes. It's hard to know how to navigate it. But yeah. for me, just sort of becoming aware yeah. has been helpful. And then sort of trying to figure out, well, what does that awareness mean? Where do we owe ourselves grace you know where do we owe ourselves understanding how can we be better sure but at what point do we just need to accept our circumstances and let it go yeah yeah. i think so much is outside of our control and understanding it could be really maddening to sort of contemplate yeah yeah we can't control everything but we have we have the ability to uh, affect and and guide now the environment around us and the yes. greater degree to which we engage in that process you know the 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 better for us you know my wife tells me something often before we go to bed which is you know dream dream about how you would like things and you know dream about it in in, in detail and think about the way that you would like things to to be and 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 she's like in the last year or so, she's 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 told me that a lot, and I think that's that's a critical thing, whether it's literally before you're going to sleep or just like take time, God, if you have the time or the moments that you do have, to think about how do you want things to be, how do you want right. your life to to be, how do you want the world around you to look, and I I think that is to the degree that we can get that time to 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 the degree that we have it it's it's important to claim and it's I an agree. important process to engage in i tell my students all the time what rich people call thinking poor people call daydreaming yeah and you need to carve out time for yourself to daydream because yeah. daydreaming is really when you break free of sort of the constraints of your circumstances yeah. and you can conceive of what's possible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in, in focusing on the world in which kind of all things are possible, even though again, increasingly they're being encroached upon. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, uh, right? I, 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 I think that you've made an important you know statement uh, in, in this book. And I really thank you for, for making that, staking that claim, writing this book and, and putting it out there into the world because I, I think the, the way in which you do it not only says something about the particular time in which we live and the particular you know, stratum of late capitalism in which we're uh, immersed, but also right. uh, about how it's I- I- important to... to either dream or daydream in order to change what you can around you. And if enough people do that, you know, we'll push things in, in, in a better direction that, that makes life good or at least improved for, for all of us. So thank you for that. Thank you for, for Jonathan Abernathy. You are kind of, there, there's so many other things that we could say about the plot of this. Maybe we can revisit it, like when I've actually, you know, finished finished the entire book. But it, but, but I'm really enjoying it. I as I as I said before we went on, 
there are, I, I read books sl- so slowly, and sometimes I'll get, you know, 20 pages into a book and say, oh, I don't know if I ever, this, this, this I'm, I'm, I'm gobbling it up at least by the standards that I read books, which is, <laughs> which, which is, is, is plottingly. So Molly there McGee. There is no wrong way to read a book. Thank you. Thank you. And I, you know, and as an auditory person, as someone who has, you know, listened to, uh, you know, and been very focused on radio and now podcasting for, for a long time, I, I often do it that way. But this is, this is one of the ones that I, I, I physically have and, and I'm very glad to have. Molly McGee, thank you so much. Thank you. Again, thank the, you. The, the book is Jonathan Abernathy, You Are Kind. Check this out. It is, it is a really important book. It is, it is unique. It is imaginative. It is like critical and thoughtful. And thank you for producing it. And thank you for being with us today on Facebook America. Oh, thanks so much. Up next, I want to talk to you about workplace inequality. I'm Beowulf Rocklin. This is Face Palm America. Back in a moment. Face Palm America. I'm Beowulf Rocklin. Workplace inequality. How does the way we work perpetuate racism? One of the things that Molly McGee and I were just talking about is how the structures that we carry with us and build in human society and that we have inside of us as human beings perpetuate things that aren't necessarily very good for us in many ways and can be very harmful to us. That can be sexism, that can be... uh, homophobia, that can be racism, it can be classism. And it's important to pay attention to things that we think is natural, that are have kind of formed the room of our minds and could go down to the level of just the, the very words that we use. And those things are, are very difficult to change because they seem so personal to us. But we have to look at them nevertheless because sometimes it's necessary to go to that level to dig out the things that truly impede us as as human beings. And so in the next few days, we're going to be talking to Adia Harvey Wingfield. She has written a book called Gray Areas, How the Way We Work Perpetuates Racism and What We Can Do to fix it. And I urge you to join us in the next few days to uh, listen to that. I think it's going to be a fascinating conversation. If you have enjoyed this episode, I would like you to post a link to it in your social media, wherever you are on social media, so that other folks can hear about it. That helps us grow this show. It helps us to keep doing what we're doing. I want to thank the producers of this program, Ace Elson and Rosabel Hine. They do a fantastic job. And until next time, enjoy the day. <laughs>